Hey you, quick question. Do you apply products to your face? You don't? Get out. No, wait, maybe you better stay. I think that you're gonna really need this, okay? So you do use products on your face. Well then, I have another question for you. Why are you using them? What order are you doing them? How are you using it? What are you trying to achieve? When is the right time to use a mask, a moisturizer, a serum, a spot treatment? Basically, who, what, when, where, how, what, you know. You might be thinking, those are a lot of questions. I don't have the answers. Well, lucky for you, I do. Hi, my name is Lori. I'm asking you this because what I've learned with dealing with so many different people is that most of us don't know how to properly apply product or know when to use a facial mask or a skincare tool, and it's not your fault. Sometimes the instructions in the back or on the bottle are hard to read or just don't make sense or can even be misleading or it's just not specific enough. What goes where, how, when, in what order, and again, all of these questions are really important. So as I get into the different kind of categories with you guys, about the different types of steps, I'm gonna show you on my very own face the order that I apply them, why and how to get the best results. So no matter what products you're using, the steps are all the same. Let's begin. Skincare is generally categorized into three different types. Cleansers, serums, moisturizers, and fancy stuff like masks, and skincare tools. Let's start with removing makeup because I have makeup on. Great skin starts with clean skin. And before I use a cleanser, I like to use micellar water. Micellar water is great for removing makeup, oil, and dirt. It's not gonna cause breakouts. It's safe for every skin type. Makeup nowadays is really sticky and hard to get off of the skin because it's full coverage. And instead of using cotton balls, try aesthetic wipes. Aesthetic wipes are hard to find. You're gonna have to order them online. You're not gonna find them in a Walmart or any stores because all they sell is cotton balls. And cotton balls just soak up and waste your product. Just like my cellar water, if you're using makeup wipes, you're gonna wanna make sure that you always cleanse afterwards because of the residue that it can leave on your skin. My cellar water is water, and so it's gonna go everywhere if you're not careful. So I use about one tablespoon on two aesthetic wipes at the same time. Remember to get in the cracks of your nose. A lot of makeup can hide there. The next step is to cleanse your skin. You can get the most out of your cleanser by slowing down and spending at least one minute working it into your skin. Make sure that you get all the way up into the hairline and all the way down to the neck. Extractors get a lot of hate because people don't know how to use them and they abuse them. So we're gonna set the record straight and learn it the right way today. Most extractors have two different ends. They're gonna have a rounded end at an angle and they're gonna have a flat end, just like this. It's all in how you hold the tool. You're going to hold it at an angle like this, instead of this or this. So I drew a little dot on my hand to represent a pimple, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that rounded edge and you're gonna straddle it right over the top of that pimple, and you're going to gently press down and come up. So this is what it's gonna look like, down, and press up just like this. It's kind of like a lazy J. Where people get in trouble is they push and they push and they just, they ruin their skin and they can even cause scarring because they've tried too hard to pop that pimple. Three pushes and if nothing comes out, then you're done. Come back to it another day, come back to it tomorrow and it will be ready and try the process again. Dr. Pimple Popper said, there's a time to pop and there's a time to stop. So you gotta know when to walk away from a pimple. Please don't forget this next step. When you're done with your extractor, you have to wash it. You've gotta wash it with a little bit of soap and water, rinse it off, and then just wrap it up in toilet paper and tuck it in your drawer for the next time that you use it. You don't wanna leave it out on the counter where dust is gonna settle on it and people can pick it up and touch it. We just wanna keep it as clean as possible. Now that your skin is glowing and clean, this is where we want to add hydration back into the skin. And you can do it a couple different ways. You can use a spray like this. This is my favorite one. It's the Ion Skin Support. It has 
minerals like zinc and magnesium and copper that are really great for the skin. You can do it this way, or you can use a toner and an aesthetic wipe. Well, now that you have removed your makeup, cleaned your skin, and added some hydration product, the next step is going to be the most expensive step. I'm sorry. Your serums. These are higher priced because they have a higher concentration of active ingredients. So this is where you're going to be using your retinols, your mandelic serum, vitamin C's, your beta boost. These products get to work on your skin. And because they're a little bit more expensive, you really want to get your money's worth. And all you have to do to get the most out of your serum is to leave it on the skin for five to 10 minutes by itself before you add anything else to it. Today, I'm going to use our LW Skincare Brightening Gel. Where I like to put it is right here on my fingers. I don't like to place it here because I, I feel like you're gonna waste a lot of product. Pat it just a little bit like this. And a little bit more for my neck. Mm, that feels good. Regardless of whether you use a serum in the morning, at night, waiting five to 10 minutes for your serum to penetrate in your skin is gonna be a game changer. You're gonna get really great benefits from just letting your product do its job. It's worth it because your skin is going to really show those benefits of waiting just a few more minutes until you put the next product on. A spot treatment is as simple as it sounds. You're just taking a little bit of product and adding it over a small area of skin. There's a couple ways that you can do this. You can leave it on overnight and just go to bed, or you can leave it on the skin for about 20 minutes and remove it. Just take a little wet wash rag or a little bit of water and gently rub it over the skin and then pat it dry. And by the way, what is your favorite skincare step that you would never miss no matter what? So we've cleaned our skin, applied serums, may or may not have done a spot treatment. Now what? Moisturizing is a critical step in healthy skin, especially as we get older because our skin produces less oils and then it starts to feel dry and the dryness can create superficial wrinkles, which nobody wants. So what I'm going to use today, which happened to be my two most favorite, is my LW Skincare Hydrating Oil and I'm going to mix it with the Flavonoid Complex from Rejuvi. I'm going to add a couple drops of the hydrating oil, a few drops of the Rejuvi serum. I'm just going to rub that together, start on the cheeks, kind of press it into the skin. Make sure to get in the cracks of your nose and up and underneath your eyes. You can get really dry right through here and here. Have you ever heard that saying that your skin is only going to be as healthy as you are? Yeah, that is true. A perfect skincare routine can't take the place of getting enough sleep, eating a decent diet, and taking care of your mental health, which is so important. You need both. Now that you are almost to the end of your skincare routine, this is where you can add an eye serum or an eye gel. Now, if you're not in into that, you can just add some extra oil or your moisturizer up underneath your eyes. But a lot of people like to use gels or creams, and I found one that I really like. It's the Rejuvi Eye Gel. This is like liquid gold. It is absolutely beautiful, and it really does hydrate my eyes. What eye gels can do is improve hydration. What they can't do is take away dark circles. If a product is claiming to do that, just keep on walking because it's not something the eye gel can correct. It could be a sign of loss of volume in the skin, gut issues, allergies, liver function. So you really want to make sure that you're working on your gut health instead of wasting money on a serum that cannot do that for you. If you want to keep a simple routine, just stick with what we talked about. But if you want to get super fancy with masks and learning how to use skincare tools, keep watching. Masks are really great at hydrating, exfoliating, and firming the skin. They're going to come in every shape, size, and color. I would just pick one that's going to help you with your specific skin condition. If you're dealing with acne, you're going to want something that is really soothing like clay. If you're dealing with dry skin, one of my favorites is the Ultra Hydrating Green Enzyme Mask. This is another great one for acne. The Mini Zyme Home Lymphatic Treatment Kit literally does it all. It exfoliates, it hydrates, it tightens the skin, and it improves acne because it stimulates circulation in the skin. The best time to do a mask is right after you have washed and cleaned your skin. What do you do if you have an oily forehead? 
and you're dry down here around your mouth and you're trying to pick out the perfect mask. You could actually get two different masks. You could do a clay mask, which is really great for oily skin. You could apply it here on the forehead and you could do a hydrating mask such as green enzyme mask right down here. There's no rule that says you can only use one type of mask. Most masks are gonna stay on the skin for about 20 to 30 minutes. Don't forget to get your neck. And that really starts to age over time. So when you're pampering your skin, don't forget your neck. Once you've taken off your mask, then you can just move on to the rest of your skincare routine. Have you guys noticed how many tools there are out on the market? What's your favorite skincare tool? Let me know in the comments below. The best time to use a skincare tool is on clean skin. Skincare tools are meant to improve the circulation of the skin, whether you're using a reflexology tool, washa, fascia blaster, cupping, the Foreo, ice balls, an LED light or light frequency. Everything is meant to improve the circulation because there's a lot of stagnation in the skin if it's not being moved around and stimulated. And then once you're done, you can go right back into your skincare routine. I want to know what you do during your skincare routine. Do you listen to podcasts? Do you listen to music? Do you turn the lights down low? Do you go fast? Do you go slow? Do you lock the kids out of the bathroom so that you can have a few minutes to yourself? I'm going to have to draw my eyebrows back on.